Hello student, in this lecture we will be starting up the wind erosion. Then what is the wind erosion? The definition of wind erosion is the process of detachment, transportation and deposition of soil particles by the action of wind. Below mentioned figure shows the how wind erosion takes place. So let's see. Before going further understanding wind erosion, we need to understand what is wind. So wind is nothing but it is an air which has some mass and which has some velocity. So because this air has some mass and velocity, it acquires some kind of energy and this energy moves the soil during the process of wind energy, wind erosion. So wind erosion, it is commonly observed in mostly in climate like arid regions and semi arid regions where the precipitation is very inadequate which makes soil very dry which makes soil very dry for example in case of indian subcontinent we can see the thar desert in india rajasthan and some part of gujarat and haryana punjab and globally if you can see here there are some regions like middle east regions and over some part of the northern Africa, Sahara Desert. So all these regions, the wind erosion is more prominent. So one of the most serious damage that is caused by the wind erosion is the change in soil texture. So what happens? These four smaller particles of soil are more subjected to movement by the wind. So what happens? This silt, clay and organic matters are being transported or being removed from the surface and they are transported to small some other places what is left there is actually very coarse and lesser production productive material behind so in this in that sense the wind erosion is actually up makes soil more sandier so most of the fertile layer be removed by wind erosion so that is why wind erosion is dangerous and we need to control it. The wind erosion takes place as shown in figure. So let's start with reasons of wind erosion. So obviously what are the different reasons for wind erosion? Overgrazing of fragile land of arid semi-arid area and dry regions that is desert, inland river sand with strong wind and no wind and no obstacles. So regions are vulnerable to both wind erosion includes Sahel in Africa, the Pacific coast of South America and lowest plateau in China. So all these areas are very very susceptible to wind erosion and very you can see here in India condition there is always high chances of wind erosion. You can see most of the areas are vulnerable specifically these are areas vulnerable to moderate very high wind erosion except the western Indian parts. Obviously you can see the worldwide map of vulnerable to wind erosion. You can see different color coding for low, moderate, high and very high. Then coming to the wind erosion problem area. First one is the coastal area. Such pro have such a problems in India about 1.47 million hectare lands are spread as coastal sandy areas then desert areas severely affected by wind erosion in india about 11.796 million hectare lands have grouped as desert area the formation and movement of sand dunes is the major problem then semi arid areas these are found at boundaries of the deserts it is an advancing stage which offers valuable lands inland river sands. These are found along the plain of major rivers that is Ganga and Chambal river. It is estimated that about 17.2 million hectare of land suffering from wind erosion. So now let's see the mechanics of movement of wind erosion. So wind erosion is a pro as a process it can be divided into three distinct phases. We can call it it as a initiation of movement or detachment of soil particle from where the wind erosion actually starts then transportation and finally deposition over a distance far away from the original location of the soil particle. So 
now let's see this movement one by one so one in this mechanics of movement let's see how the initiation of movement takes place what happens this movement of soil particle is actually caused by wind forces exerted against or parallel to the ground for ground surface what happens when the wind with very high velocity when it strikes over the soil surface so most of this velocity force is observed by the upper layer of soil particles so in the absence of any protective layer so most of the force is bared by the soil particles they are happen to be very loose and lighter or finer then wind may lift from the surface in the initiation process now next is transportation so once the detachment or initiation starts of the process of wind erosion so the particle will be transported from one place to another place so quantity of soil moved by the wind is actually influenced by the particle size the characteristics of the soil particle that is particle size gradation of particle wind velocity weather winds are very strong and distance along the eroding area so all these parameters that defines the quantity of soil which is being moved by wind so quantity of soil since the wind is variable in velocity and direction often it produces it is and makes that soil get that is responsible in detachment of soil from the surface and transportation so coming to the deposition so once the initiation starts and for soil particles are being transported then deposit over a distance which is some distance away from the originating places so deposition occurs when the gravitational force is greater than the force holding the particle in the air when the fine particles which is in air strip when the gravitational force is acting on that is actually greater than the force holding particle in the air stream then the process of vegetation deposition starts this generally happens when there is a decrease in wind by the vegetative or other physical barriers like ditches or benches raindrops may also take dust out of air now you can see the movement of the soil let's see the soil particle movement here so it depends on the particle size after the movement of wind after the movement is initiated or soil particle is detached the soil particle are carried by the wind in three types of movement depending on their size depending on their size in relation to the velocity and turbulence of the wind so these are three movements are like saltation suspension and surface creep as shown in figure so the wind erosion is combination of these three kinds of movement so this figure which talks about the particle movement soil particle movement smaller particle in the presence of wind they get carried away or they get lifted from the surface and this process called suspension and the of meanwhile during the process of saltation itself larger soil particle when the finer particle hits the ground or it collide through the bigger size particle so bigger size particle it cannot be lifted because of its mass but the energy is actually being transported or energy is being used to make a movement along the direction of wind so over the surface it starts rolling so this movement called surface creep now let's us let's see have a look in a process of saltation the saltation occurs when the soil particles of size 0.05 to 0.5 mm move in a series of bounces and jumps so part soil particle it makes some initial bounces and jumps so that process called saltation process that movement called saltation and it is dependent on pressure of the wind on the soil particles and the collision of particle with other particles so these two process defines the saltation movement and the heights of this jump and varies with the size and density of soil particle roughness of the soil surface and velocity of the wind so it is important to know that depending on the soil type around 50 to 75% of the total weight of soil are carried in the process of saltation so here in this figure shows that suppose the year 
is the length of the transport so the soil particle is getting detached here and it is being lifted so up to the length one fifth to one fourth it is in rising motion and then there is a process of deposition starts let's see the suspension so suspension occurs when the particle lesser than size of 0.1 mm size are lifted far above the surface and carried to a greater distance under the influence of wind velocity so sometimes the distance by which they get transported it is sometimes across the continents or oceans so movement of these fine particles is usually initiated in process of saltation when the particle bounces back over the surface and it get disintegrate into final particles or it lift the final particle it will the wind will lift the final particle and may the process of suspension movement starts so around 3 to 40% of the soil weights are carried by the suspension now there is another movement so this is particle cannot be moved by the wind they cannot be lifted by the wind but they can be rolled along the surface so it is the rolling or the surface creep is a rolling or sliding of large particle along the soil surface and particle moved mainly by the impact of particle in the saltation so the particle which are already in the movement in the form of saltation they starts this movement on a bigger and bigger or on a particle which are generally of more mass so this movement called surface creep so it is rolling motion along the surface movement of soil particles having diameter between 0.5 to 2 mm that is small enough to be moved by the wind but too massive to be lifted to off the surface around 5 to 25% total soil weights are carried away and so localized erosion because of the mass of the particle definition of sand dune is the sand wave of approximately triangular cross section formed by wind in simple way a mound or ridge that are formed by wind deposition on loose sand so the their size can be the size of sand dune can be variable the size either around 1 meter or can be spread across several kilometers as well the mainly occur either as isolated ridges or they can be grouped together they typically sand dune has a gentle slope of 5 to 10 degree to windward side and very much steeper slope about 30 degree to leeward side the wind tends to push the individual particles onwards and upwards until the dune tip reaches a constant height the height depends upon the strength of wind size of sand grain moisture and presence or absence of vegetation high dunes move very slowly while low dunes may shift at a fast rate so stay tuned for next lecture we will cover land use capability classification thanks for watching